Hello and welcome to Hunting Raj's video log number 17 for 13th of April 2020. And what have I been doing lately? I've been working on video and lighting. Um, and uh, it's been quite a journey. So in this episode of the video log, I'm going to talk you through uh, what I've been doing to try to get all my videos and lights you know, working the way that I want it to for my performance. So... This all started, you know, when I did the, the live performance I played a, a number of weeks ago now. Um, you know, I wanted to have, you know, some kind of, you know, lighting or something like visual aspect to the show. But I knew I really didn't have time to um, to program a light show um, because, you know, I do actually have two DMX lights. And, you know, I've got a controller that plugs them into the computer, but it's a lot of work to control, like, for a whole hour long, you know, the colours and intensity and what have you of a, a set of lights. And so I thought, oh, no, I'll, I'll have a video. You know, I'll put a video up um, where I was playing. I knew they had a projector, and I, so I asked if they could put a projector up, and I was like, no problem. And so I thought, I'll have a video on the projector. At least give me something. And so put together a video you know my partner actually um sequenced most of the video um you know i just kind of helped her choose some sources all the uh, actual video is um royalty free video from a uh a online artist called um beeple he has a like beeplecrap.com is the name of his website where you can get these visuals and they're just amazing and they look great you know and in lieu of having my own i can at least have these and they look pretty good so, of course, when you're playing a live set and, you know, you've got videos that, you know, as you can see, we have the, the title of the video is actually uh, in here. The title of the video is, uh, you know, it's on the video. So you want to make sure that the video that's playing is the right video for the right song. And so, you know, I, I want to, you know, I want to have the video. We've programmed the video an hour long, you know, the the performance is an hour long and we want the video to run in sync so that when I push play on the performance um, you know the performance sequence because you know my show is basically me playing guitar to backing tracks so when I hit play on the sequence I want the video to start at the same time seems like a simple thing but it really wasn't because the first problem I ran into is that the Ableton Live the 64-bit version I think since at least version 9 and also now in version 10 uh, is very difficult to have work correctly for actually displaying video and using video in the tracks uh, as an audio source and also for displaying in the little video monitor window. Um, I just can't get my current version of Ableton 10 to recognize any of my video files, no matter what I do. And I'm pretty good with computers. And, you know, I've followed guides and I've done all sorts of things. I just can't get it to work. So abandoning that... Um, I needed some other way to actually sync the video, you know, because for the actual performance, for the night of the performance, um, I actually just had the video up in a player, like in VLC player, in another window, and I just I set it up so that I could, you know, have one um, on the space bar and the other one on the mouse key, and I would just start the video and start the the playback in Ableton Live just at the same time manually. And, you know, my fear, because the problem with that is that if, the sh if you ever have to stop the show at any point, then you're going to need to seek through the video to find the spot where you stopped um, so you can start it again. Um, and that's a lot of stuffing around on stage if you just stop momentarily and you want to start again. Now the video's out of sync. So I kept thinking, surely there's a way I can do this. Um, and so then I tried a couple of MTC players because there is a MIDI time code standard called MTC um, that, you know, things in the world of MIDI and, and keyboards and synthesizers, etc., can use to clock to each other so that, you know, when one, you push play on one of them, the other one starts at the same time and is at the same place in the timeline, etc. But I couldn't get any of them to work. And then um, I eventually figured out um, I eventually figured out that it's because Ableton Live actually cannot be an MTC master. It will not generate MTC, uh, which is a bit of a head scratcher as to why that's still the case in version 10 all these years later. Um, I don't know, but it doesn't have it. So 
Then the next thing I thought of was, well, how about if I use uh, another digital audio workstation like Reaper? Uh, because, you know, I did a little bit of research into uh, what other digital audio workstations could I use that are better at video than Ableton Live? And, you know, I, I came across, you know, people saying that Reaper was pretty good um, for being able to load lots of videos from different codecs and what have you. And um, so I installed Reaper and then I realized I could use Rewire. And Rewire is a, a protocol standard by which two digital audio workstations software can like link up. And basically one of them can be used like a submix of the other one. And one of them is the master and the other one's the slave. And this all sounded great. And I, you know, loaded up the video in Reaper, took it. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of stuffing around getting the codecs working there. But eventually I got video working in Reaper. It's syncing up, I hit play in Ableton and Reaper plays and I can put the, the window up on another screen and, and we've got video and it's synced. Except it's not quite synced. Um, because for some reason that I cannot fathom, um, I actually have a hunch why, but um, it very quickly gets out of sync so that um, basically uh, at the end of the one hour show, as it clocks over one hour in Ableton Live, um, the actual um, Reaper is 45 seconds ahead. It's like an hour and one hour and 45 seconds is the time on Reaper's clock when Ableton clocks over 60 minutes. And the only thing I can put it down to is the fact that in my Ableton set, uh, I have tempo changes. Like I'm actually um, automating tempo changes so that the actual Ableton's um, tempo clock is always bang on locked to each song. And because, you know, the, the set goes for an hour and there's, you know, 13 songs and each of those songs is at a different BPM. And I always want the clock in the beat clock in Ableton to be synced to whichever song it is, because I like to use um, tempo locked effects on my actual guitar while I'm playing. And I, so I need the tempo that Ableton's keeping to be the same, like as the um, as the song. But that shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter, except that I've read in various places also that you know Ableton Live um, is not like you can't depend on it to work with MTC when um, when if there's tempo changes in the song because it's just it's difficult to to manage time when tempo changes if you're using beats and measures as the means of of um, keeping track of time but and this is rewire but it's it's having a similar problem and Anyway, I ended up deciding I, you know, I can't use Rewire. It's, you know, what can I do? Um, so then I was, I was looking around and I discovered another one that I can use, uh, which is called LTC. Now LTC is an old video um, syncing standard from ages ago, but what's beautiful about LTC is that um, LTC is like a, it's it's a noise. Um, it's actually a, uh, it's a it's a time code that's encoded into a, an audio file, and as the audio file plays, it's 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 constantly transmitting hours, minutes, seconds, and frames um, along the transport, like along the the timeline of of whatever it is that it's timing. So, as long as that sound is playing. Um, another device that is synced to that LTC clock can know exactly where it's up to and this is a way that you know they synchronize you know multiple video players and what have you in a in an edit suite for um, you know video production live video production and things like that and but the beautiful thing about LTC being just an audio sound like a clock embedded in in audio is that I can just put it in a track in Ableton live and do whatever I want with it. And it doesn't matter what happens to Ableton Live's you know, beats and tempo and whatever, if I set that sound to not be warped uh, in the Ableton Live sense so that it, it always plays exactly at its original speed, then it's keeping perfect time completely independent of Ableton Live's timekeeping systems, which is wonderful because Reaper takes LTC as a synchronization source. And my RME Fireface UCX that I bought last week allows me to route sound from Ableton out from one of the outputs of Ableton into the input of Reaper. So then what I have is 
in Ableton. Yeah, Reaper is LTC is hearing listening to LTC on a on a audio channel from Ableton. Um, and when I hit play in Ableton, Reaper plays and it's always in perfect lockstep, um, which is excellent. Um, and that's what you're looking at here now, is um, is you know Reaper is playing video while Ableton is actually playing the set. I've just got the sound turned down. Um, now that was quite a journey, um, but you know LTC and you know the loopback interface ended up being the thing that got it working. Um, but having the um, the video is only half the story. I do also have two lights. And I want to sequence the lights and have the lights, you know, the color and you know what have you working, um, so that you know it creates an exciting visual show, you know, so that it's it's you know hyper to look at. And um, I have these lights are currently plugged in via a little box that I have called DMXIS, um, and it's by Entec, which I believe is an Australian company, and. Um, and it basically plugs, gives you a DMX interface that you plug into a computer via USB, and then the DMXIS software allows you to control um, the lights, the DMX lights via MIDI. And that's like, because you know, with audio, you know, we're in the MIDI world here, and lights are using a protocol called DMX, which is you know, not easily controllable via um, digital audio workstations and synthesizers and MIDI. But the the Entech box gives you a MIDI to DMX bridge, and so I've got that bridge, and and the whole reason I got it is so that I can program my lights um, using you know the the audio software that I've got. But you know it's it's never been easy, and even you know I don't want to I don't want to diss the DMX IS software because it's actually really cool what it does. It gives you like a VST plugin that you can in, load up as a plugin in your in your editor. And then you can, um, using the automation on the timeline in the editor, you can move knobs up and down on the DMXIS interface, which presents itself like a lighting board. So if you're a lighting professional doing, you know, stage lighting, um, then you'd be familiar with um, lighting boards that you that produce DMX output usually. And this plugin on screen is basically like a plugin version of a lighting board. Um, but all of the sliders, like all of the parameter controls, are all also automatable through MIDI, and so you can program a light show by you know drawing like MIDI control curves on the um, on you know the automation of your digital audio workstation, which is very cool. But the problem is that you know I mean the I, I shouldn't say it's a problem because you know DMXIS do actually give you uh, like the Entech give you a um, a solution. You know they say look. The, the best way to use this software is to actually create presets just like with a lighting console you'd create you'd you'd set all the you know colors and 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 modes and everything of all the lights into one look and then you set that as a preset and then you change everything and create a totally different look and then you set that as a preset and then you create and then when you're when you're doing a show you just choose a preset and then you know at the next major you know, change in the song, you choose another preset. But doing things that way is, um, it's difficult to get my head around for starters, like how I could build a show out of presets um, versus actually just having red, green, blue, amber, and overall um, brightness controls on four different sliders and then just automating each of them. Um, and so I spent a bit of time like using this interface and like, you know, I, one, one night I sat down and sequenced an entire, just one song that was about five minutes long so that, you know, the lights were really cool for that one song because I'd done all the programming of the individual control lanes of the R, G, B and A, um, you know, control parameters for the lights being red, green, blue and amber and, um, you know, and, and using the left and the right light differently so you get, you know, like they're not just acting in um, unison. And it took me like three or four hours. And that's a long time to sit down and program like just the lights for one song. And I was looking at the whole thing and thinking, how am I going to code, you know, if I'm going to do this for all of, you know, this show, it's like an hour's worth, you know, that's going to be like another couple of weeks. And 
even then, like every time I want to change it, it's going to be really painful of having to choose, you know, I've got like, you know, like 15 lanes of automation that I'm like copying around to copy a look. Um, and you might say, well, why didn't I use the, um, the presets um, method that they give you with DMXIS? And it's because it doesn't actually give you fine grained control over the lights, it's just a look. Um, whereas with the automation lanes, I can control like, you know, um, you know, like the speed at which it's dimming up or I can dim it up on Bezier curves or, you know, do all sorts of things that are not simple to do with the, with the preset system. So anyway, I was actually searching for um, software to help me do the, um, you know, just the, the video playback, you know, when I was figuring out how to get Reaper going and get it properly synced and trying to solve all those problems. Um, and I came across a piece of software called Light Jams. And Light Jams is a, um, it's a lighting controller software that does, um, that gives you a totally different way of looking at lighting, like different, it's not trying to be like a desk emulation. Um, and what it tries to do, it, it's, I mean, one of the main things that it does is that it, it'll drive a video wall. Like if you've got like a grid of lights that can be their color can be controlled in some way through like RGB color um, then it can play video on a set of fixtures and the way that you set up lights um, like they can be any lights it could be you know as long as it can you, you can give it a way that it can program the the RGB values of the lights and it comes with a huge you know library of presets of professional lights you know so the lights that I've got here I was just able to just choose from a preset which I could also do in DMXIS I'll give them that same credit that um, I mean these are Chauvet lights so they're pretty common light jams can put lights you know you can um, through a very flexible grid based system you can tell it where your lights are and you can apply different sources to the light uh, to change its color and what have you and so um, I had a look at, you know, I was fiddling around with this, this, this software, Light Jams, and I found out that a couple of very exciting things straight up. First of all, it can use my DMXIS box to control my lights, which is awesome because that would be a showstopper, um, but it's compatible with the DMXIS box. And so, and so I use Light Jams instead of the DMXIS software and plugin. Um, but another thing that it can do is that it can take as its input for a video source just a screen capture so I can like capture this screen as it's showing the video and then it can use this video to decide what to color the lights and which is really exciting because now the lights are, are basically just doing what the video is doing which is what I always wanted to do with the lights is to have the lights be basically the same sets of colors that you're currently seeing in the video I mean otherwise it would clash but you know, if they're the same colors, that's great. And Light Jams lets you actually monitor an input. You can choose a webcam input or you can actually select a screen or even just draw a little box around a small portion of a screen. Um, you can have fixed videos that you give it um, or, you know, all sorts of media sources. And that's actually what you're looking at right now. Light Jams is actually looking at the video now and it is matching the lights to the colors from the video. And as you can see, actually looks pretty good. Why well, it definitely matches the tone. It does that quite well. Um, but the one problem with doing the lights this way is that, um, you know, the intensity doesn't really change much and the colors just kind of flick and, and you know, flicker around between like a few different colors in the scene. And so it's not, um, you know, it's not very, uh, you know, it's not very hyper. I mean, you really you want the the lights to to move with the tempo of the music and to go up as the music goes up, etc. And definitely, if you had a video that was um, that was doing that sort of thing, um, then you could control like you could have the lights do whatever the video is doing. You know, which led me to having like an absolute brainstorm. I'm like, hang on a sec. This means that I can control the lights by painting on video you know what if i don't have this video and what if instead we have a video that is um 
just the colors that we want the lights to be. And we don't show that video to people, but we just feed that video into light jams and, ha and control the color of, and the intensity of the lighting or you know, um, just by you know, playing a video to it. And so with a little bit more toing and froing, um, that's what I ended up being able to do. Uh, if you have a look over here, this um, my little secret here is I've actually got two Reapers running. And in this one over here, which is actually the same project, but it's got, I can enable the other track, which is showing the, if I just get this to the right place in the transport, uh, let's go back to here where I've got some, some light videos programmed in. Okay, now here, what we're doing is, I've got, this is the one copy of Reaper that's playing this video. So this would go to the projector screen, to the main display, etc. And then over here, I've got another copy of Reaper that's playing another video that just has the lights, the colors of the lights that I want. Now, as you can see, the lights are just doing a static color. And let me just check that that's actually, yep, there it is. See if we go to, um, to the lighting controller here, you can see the two colors it's chosen for the lights are the two colors that are over here. And when it changes, you know, the video changes, we've got this video in lockstep and it's paint, uh, paints with those lights. Now that's pretty good um, you know, obviously you'd need to start building you know, brightness and dynamics into this video and I thought well you know that's like a whole learning curve because we're making these videos in DaVinci Resolve and you know being able to actually do like visual effects and and you know paint with the light is not necessarily easier than doing it in Ableton Live with the with the MIDI um, automation but that was where I realized another feature of light gems would really come in handy which is as I was mentioning before Light jams can do a lot of, it can take um, inputs from all sorts of mediums. It can also listen to audio inputs. Now, that might ring a bell for you because this is starting to sound like a similar setup with how I got Reaper to sync to Ableton by having a special output that, that sends time code. But in this case, what I'm going to do is um, have Ableton output a track, an audio track to light jams for light jams to listen to. And all that's on that track is intensity information for how much I want the brightness to be. So I can use this video to choose the colors and use an audio sound, like a, a sound going up and down in Ableton Live on a special track um, to light jams to control the intensity of the lights. And that's what I've been able to do here by going, uh, I can enable that sound there and then over here remove the background okay now the color of the lights is being controlled by the screen like whatever this video is showing and the intensity of the lights is coming from a track in Ableton Live where I can do it's just a sound it's literally I've got a synth just a basic synthesizer there playing a sine wave at middle C and then um, the volume of that sound as, is, is what is being interpreted as the um, intensity or the brightness of the lights. So um, then I can just use tools within Ableton Live to you know, make the sound go up and down. Um, you know, I can use the like, sidechain compression techniques to make the lights pump. Um, I can use um, panning techniques to pan left and right between the lights. And indeed, you know, I've given myself a little controller over here that I call light control and um, that allows me to change um, the lights. Oh, and we've hit light jams uh, nagware again. Every half an hour, it gives you a 30 second timeout. Um, but you know, considering how well light jams is going for me right now, I'm definitely gonna buy it. But you know, I do like these kind of trials because you know, they, it's the, the, the full software completely unlocked, but every 30 minutes it throws up a nag, which is fine. Um, 
because it means that I can try out the whole thing without you know spending money and not knowing if it's going to work for me. So anyway, we've now got my lights and I can turn down the gain. See, this is using um, controls in Ableton Live. So I can automate these and I control how much it's pumping. See, there's just, you know, bright and I can, you know, I can bring up the side chain pumping like that. And I've also got how much it's panning to the left and the right and how quickly it's doing it. See, so I can, and that's just auto pan. I'm literally panning the sound. So there's a sine wave going woo, 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 and making the lights change because Light Jams is listening to that sound and applying it to the, um, to the intensity of the lights. And so that is all pretty amazing because I am now able to, if I can just re-enable these automation lanes, so I can still from within Ableton here I have a few automation lanes for controlling like the general intensity of the lights and it means that you know I can do um, you know if we listen to some of this music uh, I'll just jump to one of the tracks that I've done a little bit of um, sequencing to video nice and big. And so now we've got the pumping with the music. You saw there at the drop, it went dark and came up again. Um, those uh, aspects of it are being controlled by an audio sound being sent out of Ableton from a synthesizer. And so that's how it's all working. Um, in conclusion, um, you know, I now have, you know, it's funny, only a week ago I was like, oh, look, I suppose I should get one of these, you know, Fireface things. You know, I've thought of a reason why, you know, the multi-client I.O. thing is, is, is interesting to me. And now, like a week later, I've got a setup that absolutely requires, like, you know, I've got, I'm using like four ASIO clients, uh, all, you know, receiving and sending audio to each other in total mix. Um, you know, I'm sending LTC timecode from Ableton to two copies of Reaper. Um, I've got video coming from Reaper going to Light Jams, and then I've got audio from Ableton Live going to Light Jams. And by doing that, I'm able to create a light show where I can paint the colors on video and I can also separately influence the intensity of the lighting um, by sending a noise out of Ableton Live, um, which means I can use all my usual audio tools to, to enhance that automation. And so <clears throat> this whole setup is pretty smick. And the thing that I love about it is that I can now, I can now give someone else the job, such as you know, my partner, um, BD Dubs, who edit, edited this video together, I can just say to her, look, however you want the lights to look, just paint it on this video. Um, and, you know, I'll feed that into light jams and I'll also add a little bit of my own, um, you know, intensity, brightness, you know, pumping in, in tune to the song. But, you know, in future, we can design all of our lighting just by producing a video that just shows in the abstract where the colors should be. And then we just map that onto the lights we have because the amazing thing with light jams is that you can have like any number of lights set up and you can place them spatially as to where there's what which part of the scene it's supposed to represent and you can split this up into a grid as coarse or as fine as you want and assign like parts of the, the image to different um, to different lights so you know I could add like you know 20 lights to this setup and and put you know lights all over that grid and we don't have to change the light the way that we program the lighting you know whereas if i program the lighting any of the other ways it would be an absolute nightmare to like like every light that you program is like an additional thing to have to program for the full length of the hour whereas this way you know all you're doing is like you're painting the stage with light with the video and light jams just maps it all onto your lights and this is excellent. I'm so excited about this. Um, you know, I've 
I'm going to do some um, some better tutorial videos in future where I talk about specifics of how I've set it up. But for now, I just wanted to say that this is this is working brilliant, and I'm really happy with it. And so that's my vlog for this week. Um, sorry if I went off track a little bit there. Uh, I know that uh, it's taken me all day just to sort of run back through the story of of what it, how I got here. Um, but it's uh, it's really exciting. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next week.